drones and technology and uh, a few years back I watched this TED talk with uh, these drones and he was showing how the uh, drones could balance a uh, pole and suppose that we want this quad to not only hover but to also balance this pole with a little bit of practice it's pretty straightforward for a human being to do this although we do have the advantage of having two feet on the ground and the use of our very versatile hands You can notice that this quad is making fine adjustments to keep the pole balanced. Here you see that it's stable, and even if I give it little nudges, it goes back to the nice balanced position. Using this pointer, made out of reflective markers, I can point to where I want the quad to be in space a fixed distance away from me. The key to these acrobatic maneuvers is algorithms, designed with the help of mathematical models and control theory. Let's tell the quad to come back here and let the pole drop, and I will next demonstrate the importance of understanding physical models and the workings of the physical world. Notice how the quad lost altitude when I put this glass of water on it. Unlike the balancing pole, I did not include the mathematical model of the glass in the system. In fact, the system doesn't even know that the glass of water is there. Like before, I could use the pointer to tell the quad where I want to be in space. It naturally doesn't spill, no matter what the quad does. How you could toss a ball towards it and it could hit it back right to him. and uh, how the drones could work together to uh, control what they call Skynet. Machines can not only perform dynamic maneuvers on their own, they can do it collectively. These three quads are cooperatively carrying a Skynet. And uh, all three of them could work together to catch it, and then they could actually fling it back. They perform an extremely dynamic and uh, collective maneuver to launch the ball back to me. Notice that at full extension, these quads are vertical. Before aerial package delivery entered our social consciousness, an autonomous fleet of flying machines built a six-meter tall tower composed of 1,500 bricks in front of a live audience at the Frac Center in France. And several years ago, they started to fly with ropes. By tethering flying machines, they can achieve high speeds and accelerations in very tight spaces. They can also autonomously build tensile structures. Skills learned include how to carry loads, how to cope with disturbances, and in general, how to interact with the physical world. This last demonstration is an exploration of synthetic swarms. The large number of autonomous, coordinated entities offers a new palette for aesthetic expression. 
We've taken commercially available micro quadcopters, each weighing less than a slice of bread, by the way, and outfitted them with our localization technology and custom algorithms. Because each unit knows where it is in space and is self-controlled, there is really no limit to their number. So, of course, with uh, any kind of technology like that, if you follow it long enough, uh, you can see things that get miniaturized. Now they came up with this new swarm technology, which is really cool with the way the lights work and everything. Totally autonomous. So, of course, I see this and I'm thinking, as an artist, how cool would this be? Think of just like they have air shows and they have firework shows and those fountain shows at different places. What could they possibly do with lights and drones? <laughs> but of course, with any technology like this, there's those that see this and think, how can we use this to kill people? And that's the reason I'm making this video, to raise awareness for where this technology appears to be heading. And then just at the beginning of this year, in January of 2017, the military launched a test flight of a swarm of drones to fly their mock-up missions and to uh, see how they work. So a friend of mine sent me this short film about the dangers of where this technology just might be headed. Take a look at this. I repeat, this is a short film. This is not real news footage or anything. Almost 3,000 precision strikes last year. We're super proud of it. It allows you to separate the bad guys from the good. It's a big deal. But we have something much bigger. Your kids probably have one of these, right? Not quite. Hell of a pilot? No. That skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. The stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. They used to say guns don't kill people. People do. Well, people don't. They get emotional, disobey orders, aim high. Let's watch the weapons make the decisions. Now, trust me, these were all bad guys. Now that is an airstrike of surgical precision. It's one of a range of products. Trained as a team, they can penetrate buildings, cars, trains, evade people, bullets, pretty much any countermeasure. 
They cannot be stopped. <laughs> Now, I said this was big. Why? Because we are thinking big. Watch. A $25 million dollar order now buys this. Enough to kill half a city. The bad half. Nuclear is obsolete. Take out your entire enemy, virtually risk-free. Just characterize him, release the swarm, and rest easy. These are available today. We have a distribution network taking orders from military, law enforcement, and specialist clients. The nation is still recovering from yesterday's incident, which officials are describing as some kind of automated attack, which killed 11 U.S. senators at the Capitol building. They flew in from everywhere, but attacked just one side of the aisle. It was chaos. People were screaming. You can see high windows, very small, precisely punctured to gain entry to the building. What did you do for the victim? I just did what I could for him. Things weren't even interested in me. They're just buzzing. Government right sources away. admit the intelligence community has no idea who perpetrated the attack, nor whether it was a state, group, or even a single individual. So if we can't defend ourselves, then we strike back. We are investing very heavily in classified defense projects. We make it our deterrent like our nuclear deterrent. We stockpile in the millions, the billions. At key facilities. The White House, the New York Stock Exchange, Our Wall Street. Safe in their homes. Well, we wish we had boots on the ground in every community in this country, but we don't. So our instructions Ollie? and our suggestions are to stay in touch with you. Ollie, oh, hey, oh hi. Hi, Ollie, honey. How, how is Edinburgh today? How, how are all your studies going, huh? Good. Great. Oh, great. Hey, aren't we doing a video call today? I'm uh, kind of with people, so... Uh... Oh. Oh, well, come on, Oliver, put her on. Oh, no, it's, uh... It's, it's... Listen, I see some photos here with somebody, and I can see lots of likes, and... What's that all about? Oh, she's been here, and on your mom. She's on the spy stuff in the military. What? What is this video right here? Oh. Uh, no, I'm not going to click on oh, that. Oh, it's just this, uh, human rights thing about, a uh, oppression or whatever. H honey, honey, you're not going into politics, are you? I mean, okay, no, hey, mom. Protests. Hey, fear, just like you said it would be. Heavy traffic approaching the A720 this morning. Police. police are not saying this morning what prompted the alert. Claim relaxing firearm legislation would be useless against the so-called slaughter bots. As to stay away from crowds. When indoors, keep windows covered with shutters. Protect your family. Stay inside. are still struggling to make sense of an attack on university campuses worldwide, which targeted some students and not others. The search for a motive is apparently turning to social media, and a video shared by the victims exposing corruption at the high... But it's far from surprising. The weapons took away the expense, danger, and risk of waging war. And now we can't afford to challenge anyone, really. It's, it's not, even, not even the smallest fringe group or a crank. Who could have done this? Uh, anyone. Dumb weapons drop where you point them. Smart weapons consume data. When you can find your enemy using data, even by a hashtag, you can target an evil ideology right where it starts. This short film is more than just speculation. It shows the results of integrating and miniaturizing technologies that we already have. I'm Stuart Russell, a professor of computer science at Berkeley. 
I've worked in AI for more than 35 years. Its potential to benefit humanity is enormous, even in defense. But allowing machines to choose to kill humans will be devastating to our security and freedom. Thousands of my fellow researchers agree. We have an opportunity to prevent the future you just saw, but the window to act is closing fast. So as you see in this video, if this type of technology gets into the wrong hands, it would not be a good thing at all. So once again, I think it's important that we stay informed about where the military is headed, just to be aware that this stuff is even out there. I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Thank mm -hmm. you.